Welcome to the Mindless Horror Podcast, the podcast where we talk about everything and anything horror. I'm your host, Anthony, and today I'm by myself. <laughs> um, George had a couple of uh, family uh, issues to deal with. Or not really issues, just kind of other, you know, family-related things to do. Um, and I got injured uh, last Saturday. If you want to check out the video that came out on uh, Sunday night, uh, it tells you my full injury of uh, how I got and everything, but, uh, it's pretty late tonight, uh, everyone's asleep in my house, so I'm just gonna do the podcast alone tonight, this is gonna be pretty interesting, because I've never done the podcast alone, uh, and so I, I kind of figured out how I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna tell you all the topics, um, read the articles if there's any, and then give you my opinions, uh, and then I guess to this week I'm in charge of both, uh, bad acting and horror movie death, of course I found my bad acting, I gotta look for a horror movie death though, uh, we're going to give a big shout out first and foremost to uh, SoCal Exploring. Um, he gave us a new um, a new layout for the Mindless Horror Podcast. Uh, it is on the screen right now. Uh, it looks so amazing. <laughs> when I first saw it, I was freaking out. And I am so glad that I have uh, friends like him who, uh, you know, help me out, uh, are just there to be friends and and just part of the horror community, and not only is he part of the horror community, but he's part of also the theme park community, so go check out his channel, uh, links in the description below, like always, um, second, uh, second shout I want to give is to the League of Extraordinary Vloggers, they are going to be on the podcast this next week for the 10th episode, and I couldn't be even more excited, um, I'm really looking forward to just questioning them about, uh, what it is, you know, um, how they got inspired to do what they do, um, just, just, just a lot of questions in general and, and just to, to talk with them. They just seem like really cool down to earth guys. And um, I'm just super excited to talk with them. So be sure to tune in next week with the league of extraordinary vloggers. That should be amazing. And last but not least, it's going to be the audience because, you know, uh, after I put up that video of saying that I got in an accident, I've gotten a lot of, um, positive feedback of getting well and stuff like that. So I just really appreciate you, uh, you guys out there just giving me feedback for all that. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not that it's been it's not that it's been rough it's just kind of like I've never broken a bone like really ever and so uh this is going to be like kind of my first uh, broken bone I'm kind of I I've never been in this situation so I don't know how to really uh do what I can do I mean I know the basics you know elevated all the other stuff but um I I read your comments on YouTube and on social media and I couldn't thank you guys enough for just just the positive feedback you're giving me and stuff and uh, I'm just thankful to have a fan base like you guys, and, and you guys are the reason why I do, and why all the communities, all the channels I talk about, the reason why you guys, it's you guys the reason I do what I do, and everyone else does what they do, so, uh, sorry about the stuttering, I'm kind of just, it's late at night, and I got a lot of things in my head right now, but nonetheless, I have to give you an episode of the podcast, because uh, I may not be coming out with a Monday video pretty soon, but every week I'm going to guarantee you a mindless horror podcast, so, Without further ado, let's get started with our first topic. Uh, this is the biggest news that came out this week. Rob Zombie, uh, he started production on his third installment of the House of a Thousand Corpses series, uh, and it's titled Three from Hell. Uh, if you guys have never seen uh, House of a Thousand Corpses, uh, Devil's Rejects, um, those are the, uh, you know, those are his shared universe with those movies, and he's doing the third installment called uh, Three from Hell. My opinions on this, now, uh, I thought in Devil's Rejects that they kind of went away and got at the end they they got in a big shootout they go out in a blaze of glory. I thought they died, um, and that that was just me. I mean, you see, you see him get shot up quite a bit. Um, I'm assuming they're going to explain that aftermath. They've been coming out with a lot of set photos. I know uh, yesterday or as of this recording uh, yesterday, I was on Rob Zombie's uh, Instagram feed. He was on the third day of shooting this movie, um, and. All the original cast, um, as far as you know, the three Devils rejects are set to come back for this movie, um, and you know I've just been kind of keeping my eye out. So just expect that on the podcast every week. We're gonna be probably sharing a lot of news from Three from Hell. Uh, the news I want to talk about this week from Three from Hell though is, uh, you know, we're getting like I said, we're getting all the the three original cast back, um, and you know those guys were what made that movie what it is. On top of that, we. Uh, we got a uh, confirmation that um give me a second here i got to scroll up on my laptop um we got confirmation that uh austin stoner who was in the original assault on precinct 13 uh joined the cast um so we are not confirmed of what his role is going to be in this uh movie but he is in the cast 
and he's been sharing a lot of photos. Uh, when I say he, Rob Zombie has been sharing a lot of photos of the set, one of which is uh, like a, a heavy duty uh, armored, armored like police truck, like that you transport prisoners in. Uh, and that is probably what the prisoners are going to be transported in. Um, I don't know the basic premise of this movie. They literally just started filming it. So we, we could probably expect to see it maybe sometime next year. Um, but I'm always looking forward to anything Rob Zombie puts out because I honestly love the guy and he's just, uh, he's a really good, um, you know, writer, director and uh, artist in general. So I'm looking forward to the next Rob Zombie production, uh, and the next installment of the Devil's Rejects uh, trilogy. Uh, next thing we're going to talk about, Rooster Teeth. Um, if you guys don't know who Rooster Teeth is, they're one of the uh, biggest entertainment uh, companies on YouTube with almost, I think, either they almost or at 10 million subscribers. Uh, and I also just launched Rooster Teeth TV, and uh, they have their um, first membership where you can sign up and get all the exclusive content first. Um, but uh, on a more horror-related topic for Rooster Teeth, they are uh, doing their first ever horror movie, um, and it's titled Bloodfest. Um, I watched the trailer for it. It looks really good. I'm really looking forward to watching this. I, I did like both uh, the Laser Team movies that they came out with. I've always followed their content from way back in the day. Them, Achievement Hunter, um, and as the other guys started coming out, like Funhouse, Cow Chop, all them, you know. Um, I, I, you know, I've just kind of always followed them for years, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see how this Bloodfest movie is going to be. Um, it looks like it's going to be just a bunch of different monsters and stuff. Cause I think you see like vampires and just a bunch of different kind of creatures and monsters in this movie. On top of that, um, the guy who played Ned in Spider-Man Homecoming is set to be in this movie as a main character. So I'm excited to see, uh, what Rooster Teeth has, uh, so far everything Rooster Teeth made, I never had complaints or anything. And honestly, like I'm looking forward to seeing what they have with this. So, um, with that being said, I'm going to move on to some bad acting. <laughs> um, this week on bad acting, I uh, had a couple of choices. And honestly, uh, this one caught my attention the most, I think, um, out of those choices. Um, if you guys are uh, first-time listeners on the uh, podcast, um, we do segments every week where uh, we, you know, we, choose our, um, we choose our favorite um, horror movie, uh, horror movie, uh, bad acting and horror movie deaths. I'm always in charge of the, uh, horror movie deaths or no, I'm sorry. I'm always in charge of the horror movie, bad acting. And, um, you know, George is always in, in, uh, in charge of the, uh, um, bad horror movie death. So, uh, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get it. I'm trying to find it real quick. Uh, I, I know it was a Friday the 13th one because, uh, I was looking at Friday the 13th a lot last week. Um, give me one second to find it. This is not it. Um, hold on, give me one second. I remember it had something to do with his mom, I want to say, at the very end. Oh, okay. I think I found it right here. Um, okay, so basically I'm going to set up the scene. Um, in Friday the 13th, the original one, uh, Mrs. Voorhees is honestly uh, at the very end revealed to be the killer um, and trying to get revenge for her son's death. Um, and... A lot of which in this movie, uh, we see her killing a lot of people. Uh, but there's one part in the movie where uh, Mrs. Voorhees does just this horrible scream uh, before she tries to kill this person. And um, it's like towards the end of the movie. Here it is. This is uh, Friday the 13th. Uh, the video is entitled Killing Mrs. Voorhees. So, yeah, I know that was super short this week, but um, that was just, honestly, I don't like the way she does that scream. It, it looks like she, I wouldn't say not put effort in it because she did a really good job in that character overall. But just the fact that that scream is just, oh, it's like, you know, something else. Um, all right, then moving on, we are going to go to uh, video game universe in the horror, uh, horror universe. Um, so... 
Uh, PS4 does a lot of exclusive games, um, and that's actually partially the reason why I bought a PS4. Uh, so one of their games that was supposed to schedule to come out this year called Days Gone uh, is a zombie game that looks really good. If you want to see the trailer, it's out now. But um, Days Gone, it actually got delayed until 2019. Um, and that kind of is a bummer for me because, honestly, I was really looking forward to uh, playing Days Gone. And uh, now i got to wait till 2019 to play it. Um, if you haven't seen the trailer, it's it looks extremely good. It looks really, really good. Um, you know, there's a bunch of zombies everywhere. You get to, like, ride motorcycles and stuff like that and um, kind of trick zombies into traps and stuff like that. So um, here's the article from Bloody Disgusting. All, by the way, all the news I get uh, most of the majority of the time is from Bloody Disgusting unless I find it on my, on my own or I'll, I'll watch um, TLAV's uh, weekly um, update news show I, I i'm sorry i can't remember the name right now but um oh the uh the weekly scream i'll watch that show and i'll get some news from that too and i'll go into depth and talk about it but here we go um blood discussing wrote despite being one of our uh one of our horror games to look forward to this year sony has announced that days gone is being delayed the game's official site now lists the release date as 2019 when reached out to u.s gamers sony responded that the game will now be, be releasing in 2019 and we will keep you updated uh, on the launch date. Of course, no reason has been given for the delay, which is kind of uh, which is kind of suspect given that the game itself was very much playable at last year's E3. I guess we're not quite there yet to experience riding motorcycles and battling zombie hordes. So, uh, you know, I just feel that um, usually if they delay a game, it has to be usually for a good reason. A lot of games that's been delayed, honestly, have honestly been really good games, and. Um, so I just say out to Sony, just you know, take your time doing what you got to do, and uh, honestly, I I can wait. I mean, I know if George was here, he he would be kind of mad at this news because I know George is a huge fan of uh, this game. We've actually been following this game since last E3, and um, yeah, that that would probably upset set George. But for me, honestly, like I look at it as if they're gonna delay a game to make it better, then by all means, do what you got to do. Um, in the article, it did say that there was a lot of playable content last year at E3. And this is true because there's a couple scenes where they did almost like a whole mission and, and stuff. And it looked pretty, really good. But only time will tell. We'll see what happens um, with that. So moving on. Um, uh, Anya Taylor-Joy. We've been actually uh, bringing up a lot of these characters. Or, you know, her, you know, we've been bringing up this actress a lot lately because she is on the new, um, new Mutants movie. But... Uh, she is not talking about this lately. Anya Taylor-Joy updates us on the Witch Director's Nosferatu remake. Now, um, I know there was a time where Universal was talking about making all remaking all their uh, monster movies and try to do like a, a dark universe, and that kind of didn't do really well after The Mummy, and they just kind of canned the whole monster universe uh, project, which I wish they would have kept going, just like DC keeps going. They just they have a lot of faith and stuff, and I wish Universal would have like maybe released something else that would probably. I honestly like the Mummy. I can't really talk bad about it because I I literally enjoyed it. Not a lot of people enjoyed it, but I did. But uh, Anya Taylor Joy, star of the just released um, Thorough ba uh, Thorough Breeds and the upcoming New Mutants and Glass. First came into the public eye thanks to her incredible performance in Roger e uh, Ro Robert Eager's The Witch. And we learned last summer that she'll be reteaming with Eager's on a remake of Nosferatu. But what's the latest on the particular project? At this time, Nosferatu seems to be on the back burner as uh, Eager's is instead working on an original horror film titled The Lighthouse. Robert Pattinson and Willem, William Dafoe have come aboard on that film but Taylor Joy is still hopeful that Nosferatu is next. Right now, Robert is making The Lighthouse, which I can, which I could not be more proud of and more excited for. And I'm just gonna, and I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna go to visit the set. The actress just told EW, "He's such a brilliant man. Other than being a wonderful human being, he's such a brilliant director. So hopefully, we'll get a chance to make Nosferatu together." The 1922 silent movie followed the vampire Count uh, Orlock, who wants to buy a house in Germany and becomes. Uh, enamored with the real estate agent's wife, it was unofficial. It was an unofficial adaption of Bram Stoker's Dracula and uh, Werner uh, Herzog's directed a 1979 remake. So Anya Taylor Joy has done uh, has confirmed that uh, he is working on something else, and she still has faith for this movie. Um, I did not know they were working on a remake of uh, Nosferatu. Um, 
It should be good, though, with today's technology. I would like to see that, um, but only time will tell. Uh, it sounds like right now that, that project's probably on indefinite hold, but um, nonetheless, I hope to uh, all the cast and, and crew that we do get that eventually um, because that would be pretty cool to see, at least in my opinion. Um, all right, this came by pretty fast already. I don't even have something for this. Um, let me think. So George usually does this segment of the podcast where we chose uh, you know, a horror movie death um let me try to find something real quick that he hasn't used which is kind of hard because he's used a lot of great ones um let me check it out i I got one all right um i know i think last week um we used uh bad acting no i think the week before we used bad acting from killer clowns from outer space um and that's one of my all-time favorite cult classic movies um, so the scene I'm about to show you, uh, let me just basically set up the scene. Um, the littlest clown in that movie comes into a, uh, alleyway with full of bikers and he drives his little bicycle in. Well, um, he then, uh, kind of gets, you know, the, you know, the little, the bikers try intimidating him and stuff like that, but it doesn't really work out. Uh, and then what ultimately happens is he jumps up in the air, comes back down wearing boxing gloves and he's about to pretty much fight the guy. And this is what happens. This is this week's horror movie death. Um, I wouldn't say courtesy of George, but there you go. Let me uh, just kind of skip to the scene a little bit. Knock my block off. So yeah, as you saw in the in the video, uh, the littlest clown just knocks his head off, literally, and uh, and I thought that was uh, one of the funniest movie deaths I've ever seen. But it's also pretty kind of gory because you see the guys like insides of his head and stuff like that. So I appreciate that. Um, that was actually that felt pretty good to do a horror movie death for once. Uh, I have actually never got to do that, and you guys are probably tired of just hearing me right now. I wish uh, I had a co-host, but nonetheless, he's taking care of some business, and I respect that. All right, moving on to the next topic. Uh, Danny McBride says Hollywood would pay tribute to uh, past Halloween films. So, you know, we've been talking about the new Halloween movie a lot uh, on the podcast. That's actually was one of our topics like every week of the podcast because we'd always get some new uh, news on it. And uh, this most recent news, uh, you know, Danny McBride, he uh, wrote the movie and, um, you know, is I think I think he's co-directed it or something like that. And we know John Carpenter's back and we know the original guy who played Michael Myers is back. And we know Jamie Lee Curtis is reprising a role as uh, as Laurie. So here we go. Here's what the article says on Bloody Disgusting. We've long known that David Gordon uh, Green's Halloween releasing this Halloween is going to be as uh going to be operating as if uh, every single Halloween past the original Halloween does not exist and said that John Carpenter and Blumhouse produced film will follow directly in the wake of the original classic taking place 40 years after the film's events but even uh even though Gordon Green's movie will not be uh uh right <laughs> Reconning uh, the events of every Halloween sequel, co-writer Danny McBride says it won't be leaving them entirely uh, behind entirely. This picks up right after the first one. McBride just told uh, Flickering Myth, the Halloween franchise has kind of become a little bit of like choose your own adventure, you know, like there's some many different versions and the timeline is so mixed up. We just thought it would be easier to go back. uh, go back to the source and continue from there McBride added we do reference the other movies for fans we pay homage and respect to every Halloween movie that has been out there Uh, Michael Myers returns home on October 19, 2018 so that's pretty cool that they're going to do a little tribute to uh, all the other Halloween movies not kind of just leave them out in the dark and stuff like that like if they never existed Um, and I do respect them for doing that Um, I'm really looking forward to this movie I know George is looking forward to this movie too because I, at least me, I'm a diehard Michael Myers fan, and he's one of my all-time favorite serial killers in uh, horror movies, so uh, look forward to that. That's coming uh, October 19th, 2018. Possibly a maze at Halloween Horror Nights this year, too. Only time will tell. Uh, next thing we're going to talk about, Happy Death Day sequel to begin pro- production later this year. So, uh, yeah, Happy Death Day, if you guys didn't watch that movie, was actually, uh, it was not too bad. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Uh, Blumhouse going at it again. Um 
And uh, if you guys aren't familiar with it, she uh, keeps dying and relives the same day over and over again, kind of like Groundhog Day, um, except, uh, you know, they have a killer. She's got to find out who's her killer. And when you find out at the end who's her killer, it's kind of, um, how do you say, uh, a surprise twist because I was not expecting that person to be the killer. I won't give it away if you haven't seen it, but uh, go check it out. I highly suggest it. But on Bloody Disgusting, they wrote, last year's Happy Death Day, a slasher filmed with the Groundhog Day inspired uh, premise was both a, a whole lot of fun and a, a massive success at the box office worldwide. The Christopher Landon directed film pulled in well over a hundred million dollars on a four point eight million dollar production budget, which all but guaranteed that a sequel would soon be on the menu. Breakout star Jessica Roth even detailed early sequel plans early this year, relaying relaying London's Back to the Future uh, askew approach to the potential follow up. The sequel, the way he described it to me, elevates the movie from being a horror movie, and I wouldn't even say it's just a horror movie because it's a horror comedy rom com drama, into a Back to the Future type of genre film, where the sequel joins us right where we left off. It explains a lot of things in the first one and that didn't get explained, and it elevates everything. Roth told Collider. She continued. I was really pleased to know that we weren't just going to be pushing all the buttons that people love the first time over and over again because I thought because I think that gets old. I'm really excited to see if it comes to fruition and if it does what the final product looks like. I hope we get to do it. I had a ball. While Happy Death Day 2 has not officially been announced, Geek Vibes Nation spotted that the sequel is listed in the in this week's production weekly roundup. They tweeted, "It looks like the sequel to Happy Death Day will begin will begin filming May 14th in New Orleans." Uh, the working title around the production weekly is "Faux Pas." The listing notes that Christopher Landon will be turning to both write and direct. Jason Blum produces. So Happy Death Day. Um, yeah, I can't believe it pulled in a hundred million dollars on a four point eight million dollar budget. That's really good. Um, and they're saying that the sequel might be a Back to the Future kind of thing. So are they going to mess with time or what's going on with that? Um, I'm interested to see how that is going to play big time into the uh, second movie, especially of how the first movie was just overall like uh, the killers and everything. Uh, I I'm excited to see what they do for the next movie. So I'm excited. I'm going to watch it for sure. Um, I went to the midnight showing of Happy Death Day 1 and I enjoyed it. Um, I had a, I had a ball watching it. Uh, getting frustrated of uh who was the killer and everything so um yeah look forward to that it starts filming this may apparently and um i guess the uh, uh i would say the yeah the the director and writer's coming back jason blum's producing it so yeah there you go all right we're gonna move on to our uh, weekly segment that we do every week on the podcast called this week on crypt tv Crypt TV released a lot of uh, really good um, videos this week. Uh, Mira Mira, it's a Crypt TV fail uh, fable. I'm sorry, uh, over there, a scary short uh, horror film, and Seven Rules, another short horror film. Uh, but this one, the one that caught my attention the most this week was Seven Rules. I did like the whole concept behind it. Uh, she was a house sitter, and she comes back, uh, or she comes through the door, and she finds a set of rules laying on the table. Uh, there's seven rules that the uh, the owner has, um, and the list of rules uh, just pretty much state, you know, don't uh, turn your phone off uh, before you go to bed. I made up a room. Just stay in the room uh, that you have. Uh, don't go in, like, uh, there's a room at the hallway. Don't enter that one. Put uh, out cat food before, like, 6.30. Uh, drink a bottle of wine before 7.30, but don't go past 8.30 um, and all that stuff. And then, uh, you know, as, as she starts going good with all the rules, and then it wasn't until she drank the the wine that it started getting a little out of control from just in general of how it was. So uh, she had initially starts hearing and seeing a bunch of weird shit. Um, you know, someone knocks on the door. She opens the door, but no one's there. And then when she closes the door, the door at the hallway where in the list they told her not to go in um, is open. Uh, she gets a little curious, kind of scared. She yells, hello, is there anyone there? And ultimately, um, she ends up going into the room. You hear a voice that said, you didn't follow the rules. No one ever does. The door shuts, and the last thing you hear is a scream. Uh, you never get to see what or who kills her. Um, and, and I also find it interesting that the cat that was supposedly in there, the minute they put down the food, like all you hear is like something eating the food, but you don't know if it's a cat or not. So, um yeah, that, that, that video was just so well put together, and, and it was really good. 
like I say every week, thanks Crypt TV for the free horror. Um, we honestly look forward to watching what you put out every week, and uh, we we are definitely uh, grateful and thankful for everything that you put out with all the people you collaborate and stuff. All right, we're moving on to our subtopics. These are topics that caught my attention but didn't quite make our uh, main slate of topics. We only do uh, six big main slate newses, and then we, uh, of course, we'll talk about these topics because they're still interest to us. Um, Sarah Michelle Gellar, uh, famously known for Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, shares never before uh, seen photos for for the 21st anniversary. So yeah, if you guys aren't familiar, Buffy the Vampire Slayer just hit its 21st anniversary. Um, that's a pretty long time. That that show was on for a while. The infamous uh, Joss Whedon uh, directed and I think wrote most of that show. I don't know if he directed, but he wrote and he was like a big time producer on the show. That's pretty much his show. Um, and yeah, so Sarah, Sarah Michelle Gellar the other the other day just for uh, the 21st anniversary to just you know mess with the fans a little bit and have a little fun with the fans. She uh, released some set photos which I am going through right now. Let me just uh, let me just check these out real quick. Um, like I said, I get all my news from Bloody Disgusting, so here we go. This past Saturday, March 10th, marked the 21st anniversary of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which began in 1997 and wrapped up in 2003. Yes, it's been over 20 years since we met, first met Sarah Michelle Geller as Buffy Summers, which is making all of us feel pretty old. Geller celebrated the anniversary with a nice tribute over the weekend. On Instagram, Geller shared 10 Buffy photos from over the years, including behind-the-scenes images from filming and photos from special events. Along with the images, Geller wrote up a nice tribute uh, to the enduring legacy and importance of the show. She wrote, I don't think it's a coincidence that the anniversary of Buffy the Vampire Slayer is the same week as International Women's Day. I have always believed that the world is changed by your example, not by your opinion. We have all learned a lot from Buffy, and the best part is that never ends. From now on, we won't just face our fears, we will seek them out. We will find them and cut their hearts out one by one. There is only one thing on this earth more powerful than evil, and that's us. Scroll, uh, scroll through some of the behind-the-scenes pictures, then... And now, hopefully, there will be even, hopefully there will even be some you have never seen. Hashtag Buffy's, uh, Buffy Slay Day. And on her Instagram, she released a bunch of uh, uh, behind-the-scenes photos, which I found they were pretty interesting. Uh, they looked really cool, um, and especially if you're a Buffy fan, you have uh, just a lot of these awesome photos. I'm scrolling through them right now. Um, I don't know if I'll put a lot of them on the screen maybe i'll put a couple of them on the screen but nonetheless uh congratulations on buffy uh hitting 21 years that's just a huge milestone um speaking of buffy was now since we're on the subject um there was news this week fox chairman says buffy the vampire slayer is ripe for a reboot now uh i don't know how i feel about that um i actually don't know how the series ended so if it's meant for a reboot it is if it's not but Fox has literally been doing a lot of that uh, with, um, you know, with their, some of their series that they've been doing. Uh, not only just Fox has been doing it, but a lot of um, a lot of TV shows like 90s TV series have been coming back. For example, they got Full, uh, Full House. that's now called Fuller House. So that's about the kids and stuff. But a lot of the original cast is back. Uh, Roseanne is coming back and The X-Files. Um and now, uh, Bloody Disgusting put, we've got a feeling that it's a pretty good chance that Buffy the Vampire Slayer will eventually find its way back to the small screen. After all, there have been talks about a reboot for many years, and now seems like it's time to strike. As it turns out, Fox chairman Gary Newman agrees, and at this point, it's time he's just waiting on creator Joss Whedon to decide that the time is right for a reboot. Buffy is probably the most ripe show we have uh, for bringing back, Newman said today on IN TV conference in Jerusalem, Deadline. Uh, in Jerusalem, Deadline tells us, It was something we talk about frequently. Joss Whedon is one of the greatest creators we have ever worked for. Newman added, When Joss decides it's time, we'll do it. Buffy just turned 21 over the weekend. That's true. Um, so it ultimately comes down to just Joss Whedon um, and what he wants to do. I know uh, not a lot of fans usually are happy with reboots. And um, like I said, I don't know how the show ended. Uh, so I can't really put my opinion too much in this. But if it ended with someone major dying or like Buffy going her own way and doesn't want to do it no more. Um, I think they should just leave it the way it is. Uh, but nonetheless, um, uh, like I said, congratulations for Buffy turning 21. Uh, that's a huge milestone. Um, and if Fox decides to bring it back. I'll probably watch it, honestly, because it's Buffy the Vampire Slayer and it's horror. So, uh, 
Moving on. Uh, Fox Cameron cast serious doubts on renewal of The Exorcist. Now, we've been talking lately that The Exorcist TV show has been kind of in trouble lately because it hasn't been getting the reviews they thought it would get. Um, and the Fox Chairman just came out and said that, um, I guess the renewer of the exorcist, he's got serious doubts about. And, uh, here's the article that Blade Discussing wrote two awesome horror TV shows that were incredibly worried about the stars is Ash vs. Evil Dead and Fox is the Exorcist, both of which have been uh, steadily dropping in the ratings. The second season of The Exorcist averaged 2.36 million viewers, which is a troubling compared to the first, uh, compared to the first season, which had 3.15 million viewers. Uh, we don't know for sure if the Exodus will be canceled or renewed for the third season. It wasn't until May of last year that we learned a second season had been ordered, but the outlook is looking pretty grim uh, right about now. At the INTV uh, conference in Jerusalem today, Deadline reports Fox chairman Gary Newman cast doubts. Newman noted that the Friday viewing slot for the Exodus was tough for that show. Last season, he added, we had hoped that uh, we would be able to tap into a movie going crowd who didn't want to go out to the movies and we didn't and we did get some viewership i thought the show was incredibly well produced the stories were great the exorcist is clearly a show that on that's on a bu on the bubble no uh, newman noted unfortunately the term on the bubble indicates that the show's chances are not very good for renewal again nothing is set in stone but this is a huge cause for concern we'll keep you updated as we learn more so yeah, that's that usually doesn't sound good for movies. On top of that, um, I, I I've watched the first uh, couple episodes on the first season of The Exorcist, and it's it's really good. It's a really good show, and what they basically do is kind of like an American Horror Story thing, where they have the two priests uh, in the first season. From what I've heard, um, they just go on and do different cases each season. And I know the first season included Reagan, uh, her daughter, and everything. So, um, it's not like they weren't forgetting about the original movie. And just leaving it out there, but um, each season's different. They have different cases and stuff, and then they introduce a uh, new priest. I know the guy who played Harold and Harold and Kumar um, just was on the show as a priest uh, for season two. Um, but yeah, that just doesn't sound good. If it's if it's if he's having doubts about it and stuff like that, this is not good. But uh, uh, hopes to, for the extras to stay on uh, TV. We need more horror TV shows. Uh, moving on. Jake Gyllenhaal will star in a new horror movie from the director of Nightcrawler going straight to Netflix with an amazing cast. Um, I'm a huge, not really a huge, but like I'm a pretty big fan of Jake Gyllenhaal's work. He's done a lot of um, uh, really interesting movies, really good movies and stuff. Uh, Nightcrawler, um, Blade Disgusting says, Dan Gilroy, who wrote and directed Nightcrawler, is currently in production on a new horror film for Netflix, which will re-team with the Nightcrawler star Jake Gyllenhaal. The full assembled cast has been announced today, and it is stacked. Uh, Variety reports that uh, John Malkovich, Rene Russo, Stranger Things star Natalie uh, Dyer, uh, Dave Giggs, Tony Collette, uh, Zaw uh, Ashton, and Tom uh, Sturridge round out the main cast. The plot follows big money artists and mega collectors who pay a high price when art collides with commerce. Jennifer Fox is producing with uh, Betsy Dan. Bury executive producing. Look for the untitled film later this year. So Netflix has lately been doing a lot of, um, uh, you know, their own projects. And just from the cast list, it sounds amazing. Um, I'm for sure going to watch it. Uh, I, I really did like Nightcrawler. Um, and Jake Gyllenhaal was just an interesting character in there. And it was just an interesting movie overall. And um, so if they're reconnecting and making this movie, uh, I couldn't be more excited because uh, – uh, like I said, Nightcrawler was so good, and if it's going to be a horror movie, of course, I'm going to check it out, especially if it's on Netflix. So, Moving on, John Boyega, uh, we've known him lately from Star Wars. He's coming out in the new Pacific Rim movie, um, and there's been a lot of talks of you know concept art of him uh, potentially playing Blade in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or at least in the Netflix TV show universe. Um, and he's finally came out and said that he wants Wesley Snipes to return as Blade. Um you know, I, I really did like Wesley Snipes' Blade in the original trilogy that he's done. Um, I just think he's getting too old for it. And, like, don't get me wrong. Like I said, Wesley Snipes, he's a good actor and everything. But I just think he's getting too old for it. Uh, Blade Disgusting wrote, Last week, artist Boss Logic perfectly illustrated a world in which Attack the Block and Star Wars' John, Bile John Buega were cast as the Daywalker Blade. If Marvel were to consider this possibility, it would be a ridiculously good casting choice. Although a good... Although an uphill battle, although an uphill battle, Boyga out promising his upcoming Pacific Rim uh, uprising reacted to the rumor 
in the most respectful way possible. Wesley, man, that's Wesley for Blade. I would want to see Wesley. He's speaking about Wesley Snipes, who starred in all three of New Line Cinema's Blade adaptions that ran from 1998 to 2004. Other names that have been that have, other names that have thus far come up include Jamie Foxx and Idris Elba, with the latter also proclaiming his love for Snipes' interpretation of the comic book character. Blade Wesley Snipes killed that, Elba said, when the interviewer pitched him on the new on being the new Blade last December. No one can do uh, Blade better than Wesley. As for Snipes, he shared his thoughts last month. I am very much still open to do uh, to all of the possibilities, he told THR. If Blade 4 comes along, that is a conversation we can have. And there are other characters in the Marvel in Marvel Universe that if they want to invite him, me to play around with, I, I'm with that too. I think the fans have a hunger for me to revision the Blade character so that could limit where they could place me as another character in the universe. Hey Marvel, it's your move. And then we got a you know little gif of Blade turning around and stuff like that. Um, but like I said, I loved Blade in the Blade movies. Uh, Wesley Snipes did an amazing job. Uh, yeah, there's also been talks. I've heard that uh, John Boyega, of course, they released that concept bar that looked really cool. Um, Idris Elba and Jamie Foxx have all have uh, you know been rumored to come out, and uh, they want people fan casting them. So uh, we'll see. Um, only time will tell with uh, Blade. Uh, I know they're going to bring him eventually, so uh, we'll see. Moving on, an entire sequence of Ready Player One visits a horror classic. Um, so I honestly don't know if I want to read this because I really want to see Ready Player One. And I know they've changed a lot of stuff uh, also from the book to the movie into the movie to the book. Um, I just think it's cool that um, Ready Player One takes place in a lot of 80s pop culture. So if they're doing something horror related, it could be a numerous amount of things. I know in one of the trailers we do see Freddy Krueger and Chucky, so it could be something related to that. Um, other 80s uh, pop culture uh, movies I could think of right now is Friday the 13th or Halloween, um, something in that line of nature. Texas Chainsaw Massacre maybe, but uh, only time will tell. I, 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 <laughs> I was going to read the article right now, but it said spoilers ahead for Ready Player One. I really want to see this. It comes out uh, next week. And uh, I I'm looking forward to it. So um, if you guys wanna if you guys wanna read that article, go on bloodydisgusting.com or follow them on Twitter or download their app. Uh, the article's up there. Uh, the article is literally titled uh, titled "An Entire Sequence of Ready Player One Revisits a Horror Classic." So yeah, moving on. Uh, the Blumhouse vampire flick Family Blood comes to Netflix March 31st. So Blumhouse is working on a new vampire movie for Netflix, going straight to Netflix. Um, uh, and that's like I, we've been talking about Blumhouse a lot in the podcast lately. How uh, they just been on a roll. Uh, Blade Discussing writes: Blumhouse makes a lot of movies in secret that they never announce. Most end up direct to Netflix, VOD, or on DVD. Such the case with uh, Sonia Son, um, Sunny Malai, Sunny Malhai's Family Blood about a class of vampires. After one week theatrical run at the Arena Lodge in Hollywood, March 16th, the horror film will stream on Netflix March 31st, according to various social posts. In the film. Ellie is a recovering drug addict who has moved uh, to a new city with her two teenage children. She has struggled to stay sober in the past and is determined to make it work this time, finding a stable job and regularly attending her meetings. Unfortunately, new friends, a new job, and the chance of a new life can't keep Ellie from slipping once again. Her life changes when she meets Christopher, a different kind of addict, which forces her daughter and son to accept a new version of Ellie. Vanessa Shaw, James uh, Ransom from Sinister, and Colin Ford star. Thanks to uh, at uh, Osla uh, Josh for the heads up. Uh, and they got a couple of pictures. I will put the poster on the screen right now. But, um, yeah, Blumhouse has just been on a roll lately. I'll probably check it out. It's, since it's a vampire movie, I kind of like vampire movies a lot too. So um, we'll see what goes on. Next thing we're going to talk about, um, Jeff Goldblum. Uh, he's just something else, isn't he? He is going to play Ian Malcolm in the video game Jurassic World Evolution. So that's that's good news. I know he's coming back for uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Uh, and a lot of people got excited about that because uh, he was in the trailer. But I've also heard talks that that part that we see him in the trailer is the only part he's in the movie. Um, so for him to come back and do this uh, video game uh, to play his infamous character from the Jurassic Park franchise, Ian Malcolm, I think that's awesome. Um 
play Disgusting Road, you'll literally be able to build your own Jurassic World in the forthcoming Jurassic World Evolution, a theme park simulation game coming from Frontier Developments. Jurassic World Evolution puts players in the control of operations on the infamous island of uh, Isla Nublar. Nublar. The goal is to build new attractions and facilities, bioengineering, brand new dinosaurs, and try your best to keep up, uh, keep your beast from eating your, your paying customers. Every choice leads to a different path, and speculating challenges will arise. EW reports that Jeff Goldblum, Dr. Ian Malcolm, Jeff Goldblum's Dr. Ian Malcolm will be an uh, uh, integral part of the game, with Goldblum himself voicing the beloved character he's soon set to bring back to the big screen in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I'm going to be with you the entire game as Dr. Ian Malcolm. Goldblum noted in EW's announcement video found below. The game is coming to PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One of summer 2018. I'm kind of interested because I thought that was going to be a mobile game, but if it's coming to the Xbox One, I might have to get it. But uh, nonetheless, uh, Jeff Goldblum coming back as Ian Malcolm, that, that's really awesome. I'm, I'm looking forward to that because he, he's just a, a fantastic Albert, uh, actor and uh he he's pretty funny in Jurassic uh Park and he's just honestly a genius in that in that franchise and stuff and uh I'm looking forward to that. Next thing we're going to talk about um new dates and locations announced for Alice Cooper's Paranormal Evening Tour. Um if you guys don't know who Alice Cooper is, he had two mazes at Halloween Horror Nights 2011 and 2012. The first maze being Welcome to My Nightmare and the second maze being Go to Hell. I personally think Welcome to My Nightmare was a lot better than Go to Hell, but um, I'm not going to argue because they were honestly both good in their own ways. Um, and Blood Disgusting writes, Alice Cooper may be 70 years old, but he's still out there rocking like he's in the 80s, like it's the 80s. Last July, Cooper unleashed Paranormal, his 27th studio album in the first and first in six years. Cooper takes the album on tour, a paranormal evening with Alice Cooper. This summer kicks off the tour. The summer kicks. The summer tour kicks off on August third, with a handful of shows left in March. New dates include: um, they're going to be in Wisconsin, Washington, uh, Kaufman, uh, or, or I'm sorry, West uh, West Alias, uh, Sioux Falls, Kansas City, Colorado Springs, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, San Jose, uh, Jackson, Bonner, uh, Everett, Vancouver, Calgary. Edmonton, uh, Sacatoon, uh, Est- uh, Estevan, Winnipeg, uh, Thunder Bay, St. Paul, uh, Fort Wayne, uh, Huber Heights, Cincinnati, New York, and York. For more info on those tickets, visit alicecooper.com for all the info you need. Um, I also just heard, too, he's going on with uh, one of the former members of KISS. Uh, I guess he does his own stuff now, so... Uh, look forward to that. I might have to go see Alice Cooper, honestly, because I missed him last time around just to go see Metallica, but that was worth it. But yeah, uh, stay tuned because Alice Cooper is going on tour. Next thing we're going to talk about, uh, Netflix says these top 10 horror movies are too scary for viewers to finish. Uh, I'm going to read you this list of uh, what uh, these horror movies are, um, and I just think some of them are pretty funny, but uh, you let me know. Uh, here's the full list. Uh, we got Cabin Fever, Carnage Park, Mexico, uh, Barbarco, or Barbaro, Barbaro, Piranha, Raw Teeth, The Conjuring, The Human Centipede 2, Full Sequence, The Void, and Jerusalem with a Z. Um, these are movies that I guess a lot of people on Netflix can't, um, they can't finish watching for some reason because they get too scared, which honestly, I've heard The Void is not really that scary. It's mostly a sci-fi movie. The Conjuring, I've seen that many times. That's not too too bad. Piranha is not even that bad either, unless they just kind of get disgusted by this kind of stuff. I don't know. But um, a lot of people just, so for some reason, seem to not be able to finish these movies, and that's kind of uh, it's kind of weird to me. Um, next thing we're going to talk about, I know we just talked about it recently, uh, right now, Jurassic World um, Evolution actually gets the release date. And uh, this one's going to be a quick one, honestly. I should have just added it on to uh, the Jurassic World stuff. But that's coming out June 12th, 2018. So expect that uh, coming to your consoles pretty soon. Like I said, I might get it. I'm looking forward to it. So we'll see. Uh, next thing we're going to talk about, uh, Season 8 finale of Walking Dead will play on the big screens via Phantom Events. Now, this is a kind of uh, big news uh, for Walking Dead fans and just the Walking Dead uh, fan base in general because... Um, this, this series has just gotten so big over the years that, um, they're, they're screening in theaters for people to actually watch it and stuff like that. Um, and lately they've been doing a lot of stuff, um, 
with uh, you know, The Walking Dead ends and then Fear the Walking Dead starts. So uh, April 15th, it will be the day of um, The Walking Dead season finale. And it's set to uh, be in theaters, a lot of theaters, uh, select theaters and fan of events. Uh, April 15th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time with 30 minutes of exclusive content before the Walking Dead episode 8-16 begins for those who attend. Um, tickets go on sale March 16th through Phantom of, Phantom's website, so you can buy your tickets now. And I think after that, um, the season 4 premiere of the spinoff Fear the Walking Dead uh, starts. And uh, to make the night even bigger, the Walking Dead character Morgan Jones will join the Fear on that night. So yeah, they're was talks of how they're going to start doing the crossover event and Morgan was going to be on the show. I'm interested to see how they bring him onto the show if he's, that's where he was first and then now he's on The Walking Dead. Uh, but only time will tell. We will see. If you guys are uh, big time Walking Dead fans and you want to see it in the theaters though, uh, phantomofvets.com. Uh, tickets went on sale, I'm assuming already, if it's March 16th. It is March 19th, so tickets are on sale now. Uh, if you want to go see it, buy your tickets before they sell out and get a theater near you. Uh, next thing we're going to talk about, Assault on Precinct 13 star Austin Stoner joins three, uh, uh, three from Hellcast. We've actually already just talked about this in the beginning, but yeah, I just want to recap on that. Uh, he's in the movie, um, and if you want to check out his IND page of what else he was in, um, go ahead and check that out. Last thing we're going to talk about on the podcast, um, because I'm slowly get, starting to get tired here, honestly. Um, but, uh, so this was some huge news this week. Um, so this past weekend was St. Patrick's Day, um, and, you know, a lot of <laughs> the horror movie that comes to mind when you think of St. Patrick's Day is honestly the horrible uh, Leprechaun franchise. Uh, and they did a whole I know they did a whole marathon on sci fi this past weekend. If you guys watched it, good for you. Not really a huge fan of Leprechaun, but something they did release today or, or that day um, is a sequel to the original Leprechaun film sci fi is doing called Leprechaun Returns. And it is coming in. 2019 and in the guy who's directing it is the guy who directed the void um the little teaser is out now i like i said i'm not a huge fan of it but i'm gonna be honest the, the way they made the leprechaun look in this movie looks pretty creepy and i can't wait to see when the final product is done because if that was just a 19 second teaser of what the leprechaun looks like um i can't wait to see what he actually looks like with the finished product i might actually watch this movie only because um it's honestly it's <laughs> sci-fi is doing it they 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 do you know all the um sharknado movies and stuff like that so uh we'll see hopefully it's good uh we're gonna end the show like we do every week with our uh segment that we do every week uh giving a shout out to all those uh youtubers out there who do um amazing work and i just think they should all get noticed for it so this is a segment we like to call this week on youtube this week on youtube the league of extraordinary vloggers uh released um two brand new videos uh is leprechaun 1993 the worst horror movie ever uh so mr e and um thomas sit down and watch leprechaun and they do what's called the cringe count so go ahead and check that out it's pretty funny i watched it uh and a new episode of the weekly scream by Josue, uh south by southwest 2018 horror review so go ahead and check out to see what Josue had to say about south by southwest um, there was a lot of stuff that came out of South by Southwest and we are, uh, just all excited as horror fans. Uh, next person we're going to, uh, channel we're going to talk about is Crypt TV. They released Mirror Mirror Crypt Fables, um, Unsane teaser sponsored by Crypt TV. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to talk about Unsane, uh, next week on the podcast cause, uh, I want to hear TLAV's, um, uh, view on it and George's view on it cause he wanted to talk about it on the podcast as well. So I'm going to save that for, uh, next, uh, week. Um, over there and uh, seven rules which we talked about this week on crypt tv in our segment next one we're going to talk about is awkward arsic awkward arsic did um it hhn 2018 maze announcement trailer and uh halloween hhn 2018 maze announcement trailers so go check those out they're fan made but they are really cool next person we're going to talk about is SoCal Exploring, Pixar Pier construction update. Uh, he's been keeping you up to date with what Pixar Pier is gonna look like, what um, new attractions, stuff like that. And that comes me, that brings me to his next video: Pixar Pier brand new attractions and themed restaurants, and a day of fantasy at Disneyland vlog featuring Yum Nubs. So go check those videos out. He puts up amazing content, works extremely hard on them, just like we all do, and uh, he puts up, like I said, really good stuff. Um, and yeah, 
the next person we're gonna uh talk about uh llama arts he put up a new animated short called scary true pool, pool horror stories it's actually pretty good pretty scary go check him out llama arts is a really good uh content creator and stuff like that so uh go ahead and uh, check him out zombie chris devil's rejects uh sequel uh, Rob Zombie announces that he did a video on what he thinks about that and about the announcement and stuff and the Happy Death Day sequel details. So go check out Zombie Chris's channel to see what he thinks about um, all that kind of stuff, uh, just like I do. And I want to say that's it for this week on YouTube. So um, thanks, guys, for watching the Mindless World podcast. I know it was kind of a boring podcast because I am I was by myself. I, I wanted to try this out, but I wanted to get this one up because I have to make sure we do the 10th podcast with TLAV because kind of a big deal for us over here at the mindless horror podcast um but thanks for watching guys uh really appreciate all your support and i will see you guys in the next podcast